We are going to have our culture performances from now until it's my 1.30, whatever that is for you. So we got an hour and 15 minutes. And Tango, you are up. Uh, uh, capitalist <clears throat> dropped 10 tons of barbed wire onto my Tuesday shift. We shot back at their chimpanzee pilot for the sport. The contractor has already smoked three cigars only one hour into my court appearance shift. Supervisor likes the smell, says it reminds him of when he ran the streets and all I remember is we shot back. A gated puppet dances alone. Bars and jigs says I'm the happy one of Legion. Meanwhile, kids commit childhood behind his wooden plaster joints. Wire dodges under this silly puppet, a silly puppet dancing for white heaven. <laughs> like weapon is a jacket and precinct holds Friday hostage. We go through a fossil jaw to see a judge. The tunnel at the end of the light, <clears throat> excuse me. I sleep until I'm woke by dry cereal and surrender. This holding cell only needs a giant panhandler's palm to shake us coin men around. I'm breaking my fingers for my sister's bill collectors. Garage casket open. I mean, all third world parallels kill openly. Breaking my lungs for my sister's rent on the sculpture of construction dust. I miss cigarettes by mid morning. I miss Hennessy by sundown. I miss murder by inches. $5 bills cherish my days outside, always behind. There ain't no concentration in this courtroom. Just a bunch of B plus students living out their nightmares. How do I plead with a straight face? Two blocks up is a reoccurring cliff, along with slavers paraphernalia, along with an ordinary panhandler, along with ethnic parade history, along with the ethnic parade, along with 13th graders. But you know, let's talk about the fact that four dead children later, I still don't have a problem beating you up in front of everybody. Let's talk about the fact that money is death. Down to my last five bucks is what I call this shoot. 10 o'clock political education is what I call this dream. I got the job is what I call this blues. Two days later is what I call a cliff. Capitalists eat until the world is blurry to them. These streets are made of saliva. Some people made of saliva too. They usually have on uniform. While a crazy man spins round and round trying to make a record out of this mass production jungle, maybe I'll join them, count cash, and cry. These streets are made of saliva and white sheets are worn by a building in which kids are supposed to learn how to read well. White sheets on the highway too. Another mirror needs their head on the pike. One down is just one down, but you tell all this to the masses and your teacher will pipeline you. They told me I was jewelry. They told me this is jungle. Well, maybe not jungle, more like 50 machine guns planted in the ground. It's raining faces again in California. What does it say about heaven? What does it say about the people you kill? Waiting lines got so exhausted, a million minds dropped off all these faces at once. If the fascists can read the lips of a giant talking in his sleep, we might as well make our demands and prison letters. Today was born the most important trigger finger in the world. Today I begun counting down the pages between now and a pile of books by a tunnel. Chicago's gonna walk out of Chicago one day. Babies are drag street signs like old toys. Today, the most important letter left prison. Babies are laughing flags like faces that have disappeared. Maybe I'll join them, but for now. These streets are made of saliva when we raise half full glasses to the basements that meant nothing. And the working poor who live there, we get shot. We get white sheets on California where the kitchen table likes to talk as much as the walls and romance on the porch consists of hard residing. I mean, in this picture, characters talk spit and know they're hard to kill. The kitchen table knows this, the porch is almost convinced that one down is just one down. This town is coming to town. A circus watching itself. Half distracted, half suicidal, thrilled children dressed as cops. Thrilled children preaching and policing and intaking and hiring and snatching your money. I mean, this town's coming to town with tough trademarks to follow. Today, I watched capitalism walk on water and, and people play dead so that they could be part of a miracle. Guided by teeth goes this country. I mean, there's a cow's mouth on the flag. A peculiar notepad, whole street life dear, but the writer's not here. He's somewhere talking to tombstones about the good old days. Or splashing reborn water on his latest face. Or, or wondering how old gun is doing in the afterlife. Wondering how much death trap is in those gas stations. Now it's got to be a million dollars a day on this concrete island. New engine in the moon while it never goes down. I mean, 72 straight hours a night, at least according to everyone's posture around here. 8.30 in the morning is really 30 minutes of closing. The city shuts down for a sleepy rat race. Elevator shoe shuffle to the nearest heaven. Laughing will rest the whole way up. There's scabs everywhere. In puddles of city and concentrated schools and TV lit warm rooms, the light reveals military fatigue when it hits just right on the ties that are wrapped around the necks of lazy white guys. Empire is too easy, baby. Chant at the walls all summer if you feel like it. Best way for a target to move is shooting back. Running for a tree line made of freeways. Wisdom says against a war machine on Tuesday, you stand no chance, but maybe we be the last poor people to play it safe. Cow's mouth on the flag. A politician raises his hand and the crowd shows their teeth. An oligarch raises his hand, little girls are not safe outside. You all high depressing comrades in function. 15 minutes of closing in the city has survived another black rebellion. 
We just paying dues by trash fires, not just anybody can set. Don't you love how deadly things whisper in a moment and people kill like feathers fall with everybody screaming inside? The writer knows that death is not a matter of dignity, rather humor in a house that smells like road traces, nuclear percentages on torn stoves. I mean, here, life never was. It's just lazy matches and mannequin humanity, hands rushing away from life towards stoves. What are we doing here? Surviving for no reason in particular, because nobody gone far today. Nobody will go far tomorrow. Trust me, hell and heaven cannot count. Strange gardens where secondhand clothes play and concrete wishes to be human so that it could be accountable. Where they find you drenched and drains wish to be human so that they could be worthy arms for you to die in. I agree them all, grandson. Prepare for the day when every child is common. Don't say we ghost didn't write you a poem. Don't say we didn't dig your life. Remember the shotgun by the coat rack that everybody in the house knows how to use. Remember the tightrope made of needles for walking me between driveways and man-made best friends. Go ahead, grandson. Tune this street again. Never mind this country kills musicians first. A broken neck night, scar neck life. If these walls could write lyrics, they say, what's your angle, angel eyes? 30, 50 rounds pass by on the street with no daughters. This street has no sons, just young prisoners of war in a racist city that means to make capital. And we know so much. We know it all. We were stood against walls. Who's on the third cross around here? Cow's mouth, salivating over the street. And that is the story of why we aim at teeth. <laughs> Damn, Tungle, that was awesome. Awesome, all right. Well, up next, we have the lovely and amazing Anna Lombardo, who is going to be reading in English and Italian. Uh, hi, first in Italian, because it was written in Italian and then English. Che occhi aveva la tua morte? Che occhi aveva la tua morte, fratello di Bosnia? Che occhi aveva la tua morte, madre di Tirana? E la tua, sorella di Sofia? Che occhi la morte di tuo padre in Russia? E quali avrà per i bimbi del Chiapas, per i figli di Tito, per i figli di Irlanda, di Spagna, d'Italia? Che occhi aveva la morte nell'ambasciata di Lima? Che occhi quella tua morte mentre cadevi dall'impalcatura. Che occhi aveva la morte a Genova, a New York, in Afghanistan, a Baghdad. Che occhi aveva la morte nel teatro di Mosca. Che occhi a Beslan, a Guantanamo, a Madrid. Che occhi aveva la morte a Londra. Che occhi a Chittagong, ad Atene. Che occhi nel mar Mediterraneo. Che occhi ha la morte a Gaza. Che occhi, ditemi. Che occhi ha la morte. Che occhi. Gli stessi occhi che hanno inquinato, globalizzato, stuprato, illuso, imbavagliato, cattolicizzato, imbambolato, prostituito, avvelenato, venduto, ucciso, comprato, massacrato, fascistizzato, addomesticato il mio paese, il vostro. And now there is a translation made by Jack Isham. What eyes did your death have? What eyes did your death have, my Bosnian brother? What eyes did your death have, Tyrannian mother? And yours, sisters from Sofia? What eyes did death have for your father in Russia? And what eyes will it have for the babies of Chappers, for the children of Tito, for the children of Ireland, of Spain, of Italy? What eyes did death have in the embassy of Lima? What eyes did your death have as you fell from the scaffolding? What eyes did death have in Genoa, in New York, in Afghanistan, in Baghdad? What eyes did death have in the theater in Moscow? What eyes in Beslan, at Guantanamo, in Madrid? What eyes did death have in London? What eyes in Chittagong, in Athens, in the Mediterranean Sea? What eyes does death have in Gaza? What eyes, tell me, what eyes does death have? What eyes? The same eyes that have polluted, globalized, raped, deceived, gagged, catholicized, infantilized, prostituted, poisoned, sold, killed, bought, massacrated, fascist, domesticated, my country, yours. Thank you. Power. That was beautiful. Thank you, Ada. Up next, Tarita uh, Mikkel. Okay. Get away, lady. Wow. Mother, or that was. Oh my, 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 what we're in the midst of now and how many ways do we need to fight right now? Because there are many besides language, education and entertainment and religion and many others, you know, corporate is just a segment. So uh, after writing so many anthologies of uh, children's poems and watching them over the years, uh, try to process what has taken place. Um, I'm going to read this piece. It's it's prose, 
it's a situation that actually took place. Um, so I am uh, going to share it with a little poetic reference. Fanny Lou Hamer said, memory is an insurance policy against loss, against loss, against loss. Memory is an insurance policy against loss. Randall Robinson said, the cruelest thing you can do to a people is take their memory, take their memory, take their memory. August 2015, Saturn's day, daybreak, soul wakes, eyes zoom, scans rooms, stops to look at a book titled Facing My Bed, claiming earth, race, rage, rape, and redemption by Haki Marbudi. Book stares, I glare, remembering something. When 27 Bones go behind that scene and picks up another title exposing, we charge Guinness genocide. We charge genocide. The crime of government against the Negro people. A 242 page document delivered to the United Nations by Eleanor Roosevelt, wife of former President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Paul Robeson, civil rights activist signed in 1950. Memory is an insurance policy against loss. Memory is an insurance policy against loss. The cruelest thing you can do to a people is take their memory, take their memory, take their memory. How did I forget? Spirit says, look up, we charge genocide on the net found Sandra Bland's mother's Facebook page post, we charge genocide. One day later, Native American event displays brochures cascading. We charge genocide, we charge genocide, we charge genocide, we charge genocide. Three days later, after attending Tongo Martin's book signing, I see it reads, we charge genocide to memory is an insurance policy against loss. Memory is an insurance policy against loss. The cruelest thing you can do to a people is take their memory, take their memory, take their memory. Then remembered 1981, James Baldwin saying something very brutal must be said about this great melancholy nation of ours. And if you don't believe me, you can ask the Indians. The intentions of this country's government has always been genocidal. Then remembered year after what Kwame Turi said, education in this country makes you stupid, but what is worse, it makes you arrogant in your stupidity. The revolution is coming, whether you want it or not. We must be politically prepared for what is coming. And in 2006, 55 years after the first petition of We Charge Genocide was signed and delivered, the late great President Hugo Chavez of Venezuela addressed the UN stating, the hegemonic pretensions of the American empire are placing at risk the very survival of the human species. We continue to warn you about this danger and we appeal to the people of the United States and the world to halt this threat, which is like a sword hanging over our heads. And this one nation under God that despises life answered and think not we come to bring peace on earth, but a sword. Memory is an insurance policy against loss, memory is an insurance policy against loss. The cruelest thing you can do to a people is take their memory, take their memory, take their memory, take their memory. Thank you so much, Trita, that was beautiful. Uh, James, Tracy? This one, uh, this one starts off with a little chant uh, to update the poem. I don't know about you, but I will not listen to an all lives matter tirade from the no lives matter crew fascism is as fascism does it can't be overstated or understated fascism is as fascism does and it isn't every parent that ever told you no every teacher or even every police officer fascism is as fascism does because it leaves every child behind populist smiles and promises chickens and pots to cook them in it can only deliver the cleaver to sever heads or a shotgun to chase chickens from the fence when they are home to roost 
it is a priest who marries military and economy. It is also found in those who worry about the wedding of Jack and John more than that of artillery and finance. Fascism is as fascism does. It is the assumption that only the sinister are surveilled. It's a knock, knock, knock on the door, not far away because someone's name sounded like Mohammed or Osama been trying to get by in America. Fascism is as fascism does when no one leaves the block until they have shown proper identification. It is found by turning on the television and having truth revealed then buried a hundred times in a half hour segment when weapons of mass destruction are scarce, but weapons of mass distraction are many, then fascism is and fascism does. There is a seed of fascism when homeless people are mistaken from newspaper racks or mailboxes. When a man is set on fire for sleeping in a doorway, fascism does and fascism did. But what to do about it? Another poem, another song, wear my heart on my sleeve, Woody Guthrie's honest hope that his grand machine, a gu guitar, could kill a fascist, but no folk song could ever do this, and poetry has even worse aim. Paul Robeson said that the artist must either choose between the cause of freedom or the cause of slavery. Well, we all choose the path of freedom for what? For all. Maybe poems can't kill fascists, and maybe they can kill fascism. If it, they can make freedom mean something more than I got mine at the expense of you got yours, or expose collateral damage to mean just a whole bunch of dead people. If for a moment someone won't have to ask what is is, then maybe we can write in our notebooks. The, these machines kill fascism. Beautiful. Thank you, James. Up next is Donald Black. All right. Beautiful. We see it. All right, so uh, uh, I'm probably gonna change the pace a little bit. I'm a visual artist, photographer, Cleveland, Ohio. I got I didn't had the camera for the last 27 years. Um, I appreciate being invited to share some of my work. I figured that I would, uh, based on the, the the conversations that's being had, I figured I would share some of the images from a project that I call Balance Point. Balance Point is a series of photographs that I started to shoot about four years ago, maybe five years ago and me thinking that I wanted to continue to tell the story of the environment and the world that I'm a part of here in Cleveland, Ohio, and to kind of dive deeper into some of the worlds. I realized that when I'm walking the streets up and down, when I'm walking up and down the street, I would always see the dirt bikes. I've been attracted to the dirt bikes since I was probably four years old um, in the, kind of in the Mount Pleasant area in Cleveland. Um, so what I did is I started asking people, how could I get closer to the dirt bikes and kind of see what the world was about from the insider's perspective, you know, at the time when a lot of people were, you know, people calling the guys on the dirt bikes terrorists, you know, Angela Davis talks about uh, our country being really good at creating the image of something. Um, and I've been, and I've lived a life being affected by the image of the criminal being the black man in this country. Um, so as I had a couple conversations, got in the pack with the dirt bikes, I'm riding around with the dirt bikes on the back of a pickup truck taking pictures. And mind you, I pride myself on the fact that I'm riding around taking pictures on a regular basis and I'm not getting hired to take. You know, I feel like I was, I grew up as a young, as a young guy, I was like the inner city kid, the, the good kid. So I feel like I kind of was being plucked out of my neighborhood to go kind of tell this American dream, African-American story that I don't identify with. So I'm taking pictures of what I'm attracted to for no reason and letting those pictures kind of speak back to me. So as, as, I'm, as I'm on the back of these trucks and I got, you know, helicopters over our head, people running from the police, and I'm listening to these guys talk, I'm starting to really be blown away about how my perception started to shift and how I was thinking that this just was some wild, reckless, uh, you know, like some just some reckless young dude you know, hip hop movement generated type of thing. You know, that's kind of what I walked into it as. But when I realized that I'm out in these packs of dirt bikes with not only 
black people, white people, Puerto Rican cats. I'm like, oh wow, this is this is doing a little more than 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 what I than what I assumed it was. And seeing the world of it, and I started seeing the, the people's response, the neighbor, the the people on the streets' response to the uh, to the guys on the dirt bikes. I'm looking at man, you see poor people running to the corner, clapping their hands at people running from the police. So as I'm really shooting it and getting more familiar with the whole world of bike life, I'm saying to myself, like, man, the willy itself, you know, because because all of it is about being able to pop a willy. I start really saying that this is like the symbol. Of, of the revolt, you know, like when I'm having conversations with people, you know, I'm always trying to figure out how in, in my world, being 40 years old, born at the, you know, the height of the crack epidemic, born in the projects, Cleveland, Ohio, you know, what's the war that I'm a part of now, if I'm not in a third world country where I'm actively watching, you know, people fight back against the police. I'm sitting there saying to myself, like, to me, like, this is what this means and this represents. Now, in these police chases, it was mind blowing to me to find out that the route that the guys are riding are to all these different poor parts of Cleveland, east side, west side, areas that don't get along, areas that don't really talk. You realize that they are riding around for the pack of little boys on the street corner, popping willies, waiting for the dirt bikes to come past. Now at the time period, I really wasn't actively on social media. So maybe four or five years ago, I didn't realize that the guys on the dirt bikes got pages and the kids in the city follow those pages and these kids look at these guys riding around as superheroes, literally, like this is who, who's popular to them. They're not necessarily into all of the popular sports on television. They literally know the 30 to 40 people that's riding a dirt bike, literally running from the police. So I'm sitting there thinking like, man, this is, it was mind blowing to me to find out that the, the route that these quote unquote criminals, and you know, you got politicians in Cleveland calling them terrorists is actually laid out to go make a, 12 to 16 year old young man's day knowing that we all kind of carrying the same baggage some of the same weight I mean we 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 got similar stories I mean I look at this I call this the the teddy bear memorial demographic this the RIP t-shirt demographic of people and I feel like oftentimes when you got uh, I guess counterculture I just feel like you know mainstream media white people the people in charge whoever you want to call it those seem to be the people that's actually telling the story. I pride myself on being able to tell the story from an insider's perspective, just because I feel like that's where the, the, the truth seems to live. I find myself in arguments with people, people around me talking about how they feel about dirt bikes and popping willies. And I ride with all of the kids and I watch the police follow us and honk their horns and tell us to get out of the street. And I'm ex I mean, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an extension of the, the same demographic of people. So this is this is one of my bodies of work balance point where I recognize that I don't know I feel like everybody not necessarily sitting around waiting to, to for the rules to change in our favor um, and the bike life culture is definitely that I mean I argue with a buddy of mine who's a public bus driver and he said well why don't they go get a permit why don't they try to get a bike park I said oh yeah like a like a peaceful protest. He said, yeah, like a peaceful protest. And I said to myself, like, what is actually a peaceful protest? I mean, literally being in Cleveland, Ohio and starting to learn some of the history as a 40 year old, I get to hear all of the stories, not all the stories, but I get to hear a lot of the stories that have happened in the inner city of Cleveland that I believe is the explanation for why the city seems to be so suppressed. I mean, you got the Glenville shootout in 1969, where they, they're calling that, Case Western Reserve and the New Yorker is calling that the first organized militia attack against the police in the, in the, in the country. Like, so I'm looking at it and saying like, okay, well, these, we, the, we the grandchildren and we the great grandchildren of these highly, very militant, very volatile people. And I'm learning that we a long way from, you know, my aunts and uncles sitting on the project roofs, you know, shooting and hitting police with rocks, explaining to them that we can kind of guard and protect ourselves. So I just felt like this, this was one of my bodies of work that would, um, I felt like fit in the conversation of, of revolution and revolt and, and, and poor people. And, you know, I, I look at this, this is, I call this, you know, this is the expression of my aggression. And I'm very proud that me going and being educated didn't get me completely confused at who I am to understand that I don't have to wait for nobody to hire me to, to shoot and take pictures because the history is walking around me all day and all night.
And I, I just, I'm just glad I'm a proud representative of a demographic like Bike Life. All right, Donald, thank you so much. That was, that was beautiful. Huh. Uh, good to be here with everyone today for uh, in this very important event. I uh, actually decided instead of reading my poem, I am reading one of Jack's poems because it's very appropriate for this uh, event. But before I read Jack's poem, I will read my translation of this uh, Jack's poem in Persian language. I will read just half of it in Persian and the full poem in English. The name of the poem is All That Is Left by Jack Hirschman. آنچه به جا مانده آنچه در این جهان به جا مانده چه در کوبا ونزوئلا بولیوی و همچنین در جنوب در چین در ایالات متحده اروپا خاورمیانه آفریقا همه آنها نمیتوانند با وجود مقاومتشان با وجود امتناع آنها این راه پیمای مرو را متوقف کنند زیرا که آنها و همه آنچه که درست است در این جهان با وجود امتناع آنها با وجود مقاومتشان در حال حاضر به حساب می آیند در میان کسانی که در این رژه هستند All that is left that is left All that is left in the world whether in Cuba, Venezuela, Bolivia, as well as in China, Japan, the United States, Europe, the Middle East, Africa, all of them cannot, despite their resistance, despite their refusal, stop this march of death. Because they, as well as all that is right in the world, despite their refusal, despite their resistance, already are counted among those in the last parade, communists and progressives, Nazis, fascists and reactionaries, Zionists, anarchists, and every stripe, more are excluded, none can evade the march. This one's not coming with hammer and sickle or swastika or flag of any land. This one's the march all wars surrender to. But when comes the an anonymous cry, when, it, when will it really happen if that is peace? When can I truly die? You will never know. And yet you do because you may already have, and this life is your way of paying homage to the power that loves you enough to have taken your life away and left you with a taste of immortality on your lips. Nothing mystical, no Christ, Allah, Yava or Buddha in the wings, even lying on your back, you are marching. This is not a cynical or pessimist or nihilist poem. Join it to your life and you will leave as if there were no drum to march to. There is no march at all. You're done. All will be well. All will be well, well for all. Thank you. If I have a minute, I would like to read a part of the poem that I wrote for Jack, or sure. if my, my time is up. We're really yes. short on time, but go ahead. Go ahead and take a minute. OK. This poem, uh, you probably said, you saw the videos of it in Facebook for the Red Poet. I feel close to the galaxy today, soaking on the rain, following the lost stars, with this news waking me up all night, with wondrous arcane poems chewing my books. But can one believe that guiding voice of life leaves this earth while his footsteps are still alive in North Beach? 
which part of this galaxy he was landed now. Maybe he flew to eternity to spread love from above. Who was this man, tall with the wild mustache, with the heart as sensitive as a child and the energy of a young lion? Now that he will not walk around the city lights, now that he will not meet us in Cafe Therese and will not send us emails, I think the end is not too far for all of us. How is it possible to see the sun go down right in the heart of summer in the city of San Francisco? That red poet will never come to my house again to eat Persian food and read Rumi with me. I will complain to Rumi. I will complain to Walt Whitman for inviting Jack to eternity only to have the red poet next to them. But let's remember to celebrate Jack. Let's dance behind house number 858A. Let's put red roses in Aggie's hair, celebrating the man we all adored. Thank you for this. Uh, that was amazing. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Karen uh, Harvey Turner, you're up next. Thank you. Um, those are beautiful words. It's it's thank you. It's really um, wonderful to be here amongst um, these inspiring and powerful discussions we're having. Um, this is a two part poem. There is plenty. If we work toward balance, there is enough. Balance does not occur without struggle. If you were ever a child who balanced on a log or a street curb, you know that balance is struggle. But as you struggle, you get better at the balance. We as humans, you'd think we'd be better at the balance by now. Itakwiyayawasan is a benediction my husband uses in prayer. It means to all my relatives. It acknowledges that we are all connected. We are all connected, we are all struggling for balance, and we all just need enough, enough. I wish you a blessing, I wish you enough. Enough clean water so that your thirst is slaked and your body cleansed, enough food to sustain you, enough shelter so that you are cooled from the sun, warm from the wind, and dry from the rains. I wish you enough. Enough vision to see the beauty and the suffering of the world. Enough grace so that you do not turn away from either. Enough strength to carry on when the struggle seems overwhelming. Enough wisdom to recognize bounty and to know it must be shared. I wish you enough. Enough laughter to soothe your sorrow, enough sorrow so that you cherish the sweet, enough rest to give you respite and dreaming, enough dreaming to imagine a better world, enough community to make it happen. I wish you enough. Enough justice to live freely and without borders, enough peace so that you walk without fear, enough love so that your heart has room for all. I wish you a blessing. I wish you enough. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful poem. So it seems Ivan is not here yet. So we are going to actually, is Daniel here? I didn't see Daniel either. If people are not here, we're just going to keep on keeping on. All right. Um, Scott, are you ready to read a poem? Scott Bird? Without love there is no revolution without poetry there is no love as rilke said gesang ist dasein song is being that those are the words of jack hirschman i'd like to read a, my own translation of a victor hara song and my, my poem flows into uh, this Victor Hara piece called Manifiesto. Here's the translation. I do not sing just to sing. 
in order to have a good voice, I sing because the guitar has sense and reason. It has the heart of the earth and wings of a little dove. It's like sacred water, holy with glories and sorrows. Here is where my song is embedded, like the violet said, working guitar with an air of spring. It is not a guitar of riches, nor does it resemble anything. My song is a scaffolding built to reach the stars. The song has sense when it throbs in your veins. I know I will die singing the truest of truths, not fleeting flattery nor foreign fame, but the song of the lark to the bottom of the earth, there where all are gathered, where everything begins. The song has been brave, and there will always, always be a new song. I watched the lead belly of the mountain grow bare of ice caps and snow. I watched the river flow slow down to a trickle. I watched the lumber poor carpenter falter in the streets and barter his last dime for a nickel. I watched the young girl learn to paint before she learned to write and she taught me how to see the fish in the trees. I watched the Diné grandmother dig a finger's well in the earth to quench the thirst of her dying flock of sheep. And I watched her ladle one cup of mineral to slake her own throat caked in red dirt. And I watched the mother redwood tell her children to sweat in their red coats. And I watched the spider woven wool of the nape of fire sweep over the forest floor. I watched the baby take its first steps and dance in the threshold of the open door. I watched the changing leaves of autumn give way to a dry, dry cold. I watched the old man roll his last cigarette and dump his tobacco fold. I watched the branch divide and I watched the people hide. The halls of justice flooded to the pillars by an unjust tide. I watched the old world leave behind the earth for a colony built on Mars. And I watched them streak across the sky and I heard the screaming stars. I watched the wicked, wicked thing and I stood and watched it in its throes. I watched though the brain trembles, the broken hearted know. I watched as a child watches the first of the falling snow and watches waiting. I think I'll no longer watch and wait. I think I'll no longer think from now on. I think I'll just sing. Yo no canto por cantar, ni por tener buena voz. Canto porque la guitarra tiene sentido y razón. Tiene corazón de tierra. Y alas de palomita es como el agua bendita, santigua gloria y penas. Aquí se encajó mi canto, como dije violeta. Guitarra trabajadora con olor de primavera. 
que no es guitarra de ricos, ni cosa que se parezca. Mi canto es de los andamios, por alcanzar las estrellas. Que el canto tiene sentido cuando palpitan las venas del que morirá cantando las verdades verdaderas no las lisonjas fugaces ni las famas extranjeras sino el canto de una londra hasta el fondo de la tierra. Ahí donde llega todo y donde todo comienza. Cuando que ha sido valiente, siempre será canción nueva. Siempre será canción nueva. Siempre será canción nueva. Thank you, Scott. That was amazing. Getting a lot of love in the chat for that beautiful performance. Uh, I am going to call on Michelle Sotoros next. Flint with all my gasoline. Land taken without permission, attempted poisoning to non-existence, they hope to bury you. Erase you away like you never walked your children to the playground here. Walked your lover through Wilson Park here. Never drove to work here. Took a night off, watched the stars you could make out, a little tipsy under the moon, drawing out constellations. They wanted you gone, with no option to move. Wanted your payment, in fear you lose everything. This is what terrorism is when the rich white man does it. Car parts over children, image over facts. This is calling mothers liars to their face, thinking it would convince them they were wrong. He thought he could silence you thought he could drown your protest with murky intentions, band together with other monsters to make you feel crazy, to make you feel fake. They wanted to rewrite the map with no consequence. They forgot. Small city of warriors, they pushed you to the battleground against your will. Didn't realize your survival skills, didn't know your fight. Never told that the gun is only as scary as what you put in it. The fire only as dangerous as what you fuel it with. They forgot why you're named Flint. Forgot that if you're pushed too hard, you'll set the whole thing ablaze. Thank you. Damn, Michelle, I gotta tell you, I'm a huge fan of your work. That was beautiful, beautiful. Thank, Thank you so much. Seriously, y'all gotta hear, okay, I know I'm going on a sidetrack. Michelle has this beautiful poem about Greece against fascism. So amazing. If you could post that YouTube link, I would love you forever. But uh, Michael, are you ready? Thank you, I'm ready to go. It's um. It's good to be here with all of you. Uh, I've been adding the names of black boys and men murdered by the police to my serial poem, What Not to Do, since 2018. The devaluing of black people's lives to the point where these modern day lynchings are commonplace is a critical component of a reactionary cultural offensive that is conditioning society for expanded acceptance of the violence that is inherent in fascist evolution. I, I share this poem today in honor of Jack Hirschman, who was the first editor to publish my poetry and the first to have it translated more than 30 years ago. In recent years, Jack published this poem, What Not to Do, an unfinished poem a few times and asked me to recite it at many events 
It takes about 10 minutes to read the entire poem, so I'm just going to share an excerpt. What not to do, an unfinished poem. Breeze, Eric Gardner choked. Sell, Lucy's. Resist to death. Stand, Amadou Diallo in vestibule. Carry wallet, look out of place, act suspicious. 41 fire, 19 bullets kill. Park, Tanya Hagerthy on side of road. Talk on cell on side of road. Shot on side of road. Drive, Philandrica still with broken brake lights. Carry legal firearm. Announce you have a gun. Shout, not reaching for gun. Shot, five bullets, two to heart. Approach, Oscar Grant, the police. Beg, not to shoot. Nil, shot anyway, and back. Carry, Tamir Rice, toy gun. Shot with real bullets. Carry, remain Bisbon, prescription bottle. Shot two bullets to torso. Not carry Keith Lamont Scott a gun when told to drop it. Shot. B Natasha McKinnon schizophrenic. B superhuman stunned while shackled. Fifty thousand votes to death. B John Crawford an imminent threat. Shop for Walmart air rifle. Carry Walmart air rifle at Walmart. Talk on cell phone at Walmart. Shot with real bullets at Walmart. B, George Floyd, a suspect. B, a six foot seven black man. B, claustrophobic, asphyxiated knee on neck while handcuffed. Run, Stephen Clark, the grandmother's yard. Carry cell phone, shot 20 bullets, fired eight, hit primarily in back. Jog, armored Aubrey, shot two bullets, kill while hunted. Sleep, Brianna Taylor in bed, shot eight bullets, kill. Sleep, Richard Brooks at Wendy's, flee for daughter's birthday. Point, did taser over shoulder, shot two bullets and back. Walk Elijah McLean home. Look sketchy, play music, wear ski masks, shop for iced tea, carry iced tea, act crazy, whisper can't breathe, beg to go home, be superhuman, be anemic, be suspicious, be on something, be undetermined, choked to death. Breathe. Hey, thank you so much for watching these amazing performers. If you are interested in learning more about the League of Revolutionaries for a New America Culture work, visit us at lrna.org. We are looking for artists, musicians, poets, writers. That is all of you. You do not need to be a member of the League of Revolutionaries for a New America to do this important work. But join us today because we need a united front. Thank you so much.